This is wild parsnip. It's an invasive species that can cause nasty burns if you get it on your skin. I have a large infestation of it on my property, so in this video I'll talk about how you can get rid of it. Now, with the caveat that I am a mechanical engineer and not a botanist, first let's talk about the plant's life cycle a bit. As you can see, these plants can get pretty large. This one is almost as tall as I am, but they have a two-year life cycle. This is the second year. In the first year, they just form a rosette, which I can't find any on the ground right where I am right now, but is a much smaller plant that does not flower or have seeds. Then in the second year, they sprout like this, eventually develop yellow flowers, and then when they develop seeds, they look like this. These are green, but eventually the seeds will turn brown and fall off the plant, giving you more parsnip. The plants do very well on roadsides and the border of farm fields, where you see I am here, where they can get a lot of direct sunlight. This can create a problem, especially with roadside mowing, when crews go along, mow the plants after they've gone to seed, and simply spread the seeds down the side of the highway. The best way to get rid of individual plants, like this one here, which is not quite as far along in its life cycle this year and has not flowered yet, is to simply pull it up by the root. However, you have to be careful because these plants develop a pretty deep tap root, and if you don't get a good grip on the base, you can see there I got the root out with this one, but sometimes if the soil is drier or the plant is bigger and stronger, it will just snap off at the base and you won't get the root out. In my experience, that does not kill the plant and they can start to grow back. So it helps if you have a shovel. I just use a small one like this because that makes it easier to dig the root out. Make sure you get that root out. And once you've done that, make sure you really chop the root off or dispose of the plant. Sometimes I have just kind of casually tossed these on the ground after ripping them out and then come back a week or two later to find out that the root has sort of taken hold again and the plant has continued to flower. So these things can be stubborn and hard to kill. Make sure you get that root out and don't give the plant a chance to grow back or come back to life. However, you don't want to just pull the plant and toss it aside once it has gone to seed. You can see this one has some flowers, but is in the early stage of developing seeds. And I've asked around a bit, nobody could really give me a straight answer as to when these seeds are viable. Again, later in the summer, I'm filming this in mid-June, but starting around July or maybe even early August, these seeds will start to turn brown and fall off the plant on their own. I don't know if they're viable at this green stage, but I would prefer not to take any chances. So take a pair of clippers, snip the seeds head, seed heads off, put them in a plastic bag, and store them in direct sunlight for a couple weeks. That will be sure to kill the seeds, then you can dispose of them in the trash. You don't just want to toss the loose seed heads in your trash because then you're making the seeds somebody else's problem as they'll eventually just get dumped somewhere else. So again, if you see these green or brown seeds at all, don't just yank the plant out. Make sure you bag and secure the seed heads. Now, here's what I mean about being careful about pulling these and then just throwing them on the ground. This is a big patch that I pulled about a week ago, and you can see a bunch of them have started to rot, but this one almost looks like it's still alive. Like, it's still got live flowers pointing up like they're trying to get sun. The root didn't really take hold again, so I don't know if it's just because this was a much larger plant and it had some nutrients left that are keeping the flowers alive, or if it was still just kind of getting moisture from rain or what, but... Again, especially if they have seeds or flowers that are going to turn into seeds very soon, be really careful just tossing these on the ground because they might not be completely dead. They're kind of like a zombie plant that could still get seeds in the ground and have more next year. So my plan for this was to come along and chop all these up with my mower to make sure they're dead since none of them have seeds yet. But again, just be really careful about just tossing them to the side because they might come back on you. Now, you have to be careful with these plants because the big ones with the bright yellow flowers might seem the scariest, but they're the easiest ones to spot. For example, here's one right along the edge of the woods at this meadow. Again, they tend to grow on edges where they can get lots of sunlight and not actually in the woods. So you might look around quickly here and think, okay, that's the only one. But if I look at this grass and look closely, sometimes it helps to get down at eye level with the grass. You'll see I actually have a ton of them here. These plants are smaller, probably because they had more competition from this tall grass. I also mowed this patch last year, which I'll talk about in a second, which I think maybe weakened the plants in the first year of their life cycle so they didn't grow as big in the second year. Again, I'm not a botanist, but that's my hunch as an engineer. But the problem with that is then in the second year, that makes these much harder to detect because a lot of them are barely taller than the grass at all or actually a little shorter than the grass. So this can get sort of daunting because there are dozens, if not hundreds, of these plants, and there's way more than I could ever pull out one at a time. 
So this is the case where if you have a large patch, it is okay to mow, but you want to do it early in the season before any of these plants start to go to seed. And again, depending on how much competition they have and how much light they're getting, some of them can go to seed at different stages. You've already seen I have some that seeded already and some that are just barely starting to flower. So before you mow a patch, you really want to look around and make sure none of the plants in that patch have seeds yet or your mower is just going to spread them around. Supposedly, if you wait until after they've flowered and you mow them, that should kill them and they could not grow back. In my experience, however, I have mowed and then come back a week or two later and seen a plant kind of trying to come back to life and flower again. So if you mow once, you're going to need to keep mowing and make sure you prevent those plants from flowering and going to seed. I should have mentioned this at the beginning in case it wasn't obvious. Wear gloves, long sleeves, and ideally long pants when you're handling this stuff. Again, I have luckily not gotten burned, but if you look at some of the pictures online, this stuff can give you really nasty type of burn called a photochemical burn, meaning it doesn't burn you initially, but it does once it's exposed to light. So you could get the plant on you, think you're fine, and then be out working in the sun or in the sun later in the day and get a really nasty burn. So you do not want to get this stuff on your skin. It is raining today anyway, so I'm wearing my full rain gear. Um, obviously, this can get pretty hot if you're doing this in the summer, since the plants tend to grow in June and July. So I prefer to get up and do it early in the morning or in the evening when there's still enough light to see the plants, but I'm not going to roast on an 80 degree summer day. Also, I want to throw in, this is all with the giant caveat that again, I am an engineer, not an expert in this. I just happen to be a guy who had a large infestation of wild parsnip on his property. Most of the information I got that you see on this video is from either the New York State DEC website or emailing people at the Tompkins County Community Extension through Cornell University. So shout out and thank you to them for providing information on managing this stuff. I will put links to their websites in the description of this video if you want to check out the official information from them. So that's it for this video. I am going to mow this patch where again you can't see them all from up here but there are a lot of smaller plants that would take me forever to pull individually. And then maybe in a few weeks or throughout the summer, I will come back out here and see if any of the plants I mowed are attempting to come back to life, and we'll see how that goes.